This chapter deals with different exchange rate regimes and their properties. In general, one can distinguish between two cases. So the exchange rate could be fixed. So in this case, uh, the currencies are tied together by a fixed rate, which does not vary over time, basically. And on the other hand, a currency could be flexible so that it is not tied to another uh, currency. And in this case, the currency floats freely and therefore the exchange rate varies over time depending on uh, demand uh, and supply of the given currency on the world market. Overall, in reality, however, there are many regimes that have different degrees of flexibility and we will discuss uh, them sequentially. Now we start at the left hand side of this spectrum with uh, the fixed exchange rate regimes and the most extreme one would be a currency union. In this case, a country gives up its own currency and joins a union with other countries that also give up their own currencies and then they use one currency and therefore all of them give up their own sovereign monetary policy. The most prominent example of this may be the euro area. In this case, the joint monetary policy is done by the European Central Bank and the individual countries uh, that are members of uh, the euro area uh, cannot set their own interest rates. Uh, and also the exchange rate, of course, uh, does not appear anymore as a policy variable. The benefits of such a currency union are that there is no exchange rate risk, uh, transaction costs uh, are lower, uh, coordination costs may be lower and so on, but there are also risks and the risks occur if countries are not similar enough basically, uh, so if their business cycle are out of sync and so on, then the system is very much prone to crisis. So in the euro area case, for example, it may be that one country would require a very different interest rate policy actually than the other countries, but it cannot set an independent uh, interest rate. It cannot conduct independent monetary policy. And then it may come under pressure on financial markets and so on, as we have seen uh, during the euro area crisis after the global financial uh, crisis of 2007 to 2009. The next regime described here would be dollarization. Dollarization is also a very uh, extreme uh, exchange rate regime in, in the sense of a fixed exchange rate because in this case a country gives up its own currency and uses a foreign currency instead. So there is a full currency substitution in this case. Often the US dollar is used as this uh, uh, currency instead of the previous uh, home currency and therefore uh, we have this name dollarization. Examples for this include Liechtenstein, uh, the country uses the Swiss franc as legal tender and sometimes countries adopt uh, other currencies after crisis. For example Zimbabwe when it had, uh, had uh, hyperinflation afterwards it uh, used the dollarization basically to um, bring the, the inflation rate down. In this case also partial substitution is possible which would be a little bit less of an extreme case then where the home currency is still in circulation and allowed as legal tender but also a foreign currency is um, uh, used. So for example uh, this was uh, present in Argentina when they used the US dollar uh, and tied the peso to the US dollar uh, in the 1990s which helped them to bring inflation down but in the long run it led to uh, a sovereign debt crisis in uh, Argentina. The next regime would still be one of uh, very fixed and uh, rigid exchange rates and that's a fixed bag. So a fixed bag would be that a country still uses its own currency but it guarantees a fixed exchange rate to another country, again that's often the US dollar but there can also be other uh, currencies here. Often, again, such a system is used to stabilize uh, a currency because if it's credible, uh, then uh, the, the currency that may have fluctuated quite a lot um, uh, can stabilize because there is a fixed um, exchange rate to another currency that may be a stable one, such as the US dollar. 
but it can also be uh, unstable if it's not credible and if the central bank cannot defend it. So sometimes it also led to uh, exchange rate crisis in the end. If investors, for example, do not believe that the monetary authorities would or could defend the bank and then there are uh, speculative attacks on the currency, this would lead to a situation where the monetary authorities would have to um, use the, their currency reserves to buy a lot of uh, uh, their own uh, currency to prop up uh, its uh, price, so to keep the, the uh, exchange rate stable, and that may lead to huge losses in reserves. So this could be very uh, expensive for a country to keep up. In the end, often uh, the currency back breaks down and then the home country still has to devalue in the end, as it has happened quite frequently with um, Mexican peso. Then in the European uh, monetary system in 1992, there was a crisis um, and so on and so forth. So these uh, backs um, are often um, uh, come under the attack and have to be uh, lifted. This leads to a next regime, which is a little bit more flexible already. That is a, not a fixed bag where you have one fixed exchange rate to another currency, but a band that you allow for. So you may uh, say there is a fixed exchange rate to another um, country's currency, but you allow the exchange rate to fluctuate within plus minus 15% of this uh, fixed exchange rate. And that was also in case of the European monetary system after the initial much stricter bag broke down, they allowed for a much more flexible band actually than uh, before. Then there could be something like a crawling bag. In this case, currency adjustments would be allowed. So a currency could appreciate or depreciate over time but only gradually. So the currency is not allowed to um, adjust fully again to certain uh, shocks, but uh, there would be interventions that um, lead to the situation where the uh, price of the currency would move over time. And this, this bag would therefore move in a certain uh, direction. Uh, this would basically reduce sudden shocks and volatility. And one example of this was uh, Mexico, what it did after the peso crisis in the 1990s um, to reduce inflationary pressure. So if the currency would have devalued um, immediately, that would have led to a large increase in prices of foreign goods at home. And therefore a crawling back would, um, was adopted in order to reduce this inflationary pressure. More flexible still would be a crawling band. In this case, it's not a fixed value a bag that is allowed to change gradually over time, but a band that is uh, allowed to change. And for example, China uses a version thereof to avoid too much fluctuation in uh, appreciations or depreciations of the Yuan. The next regime uh, would be a managed float. So in this case, the currency is allowed to float freely most of the time. But sometimes the monetary authorities step in and intervene in order to um, avoid certain extreme outcomes. So if the currency appreciates or depreciates um, very fast, so if there is a lot of pressure on the currency, then the monetary authorities uh, do something against um, these uh, large changes. Most countries basically use such a regime so that from time to time they intervene. And the regime of a really pure float, where countries um, uh, allow their currencies to float completely freely without intervention, that is uh, rarely the case. Canada, for example, has intervened in the exchange rate markets only um, very rarely, so the last time in the 1980s. And also the United States only intervenes very rarely, also the Eurozone and uh, other countries. But still, from time to time, they also intervene. So this whole range of uh, possible exchange rate regimes exists and it um, goes from a fixed exchange rate that is very rigid to a flexible exchange rate where you can have a pure float without any intervention. And there are many different things in between as we see here. Thank you very much for watching the video and I hope you found it interesting and useful. For more videos on economic content, uh, please visit my channel that you find here to the left. Um, and to the right, you see the next video in the series at the top. And at the bottom, you see uh, the whole lecture in the form of a playlist.